In this episode, we are going to take a look at how we can normalize geodata in QGIS. Normalizing of uh, data, uh, according to Wikipedia, is uh, in the simplest cases, normalization of ratings means adjusting values measured on different scales to a notionally common scale. Uh, this is a bit abstract and uh, normalization of data is, or at least could be, pretty abstract. Um, if you have formal academic training in uh, GIS, you have probably heard of normaliz normalizing da your, uh, data, uh, especially uh, data that is of a choropleth type. Uh, let me take some examples. So, for instance, numbers, uh, numerical values, they are pretty easy to uh, see the difference. Uh, the number six is clearly bigger than the number three. Uh, using another scale, uh, length. Uh, one line is clearly longer than the other. And the same is true of area. So one area is clearly bigger than the other. Uh, however, when you assign different values uh, to the same object, uh, in this case we have a small area that has been assigned the numerical value 3, and we have a large area assigned a numerical value of 6. Um, you could think that the values here uh, could be represented by a color scale, so that the lighter green has the lower value, numerical value, and the darker green has the higher numerical value. But when you apply a color scheme, a symbology, to a shape, you need to also consider the size of the shape. So normalization in this case would be that we bring the two values together, the size and the numerical value, and combine them in a new way that is perceivably the same or a common scale for the two values. So in this case, we could divide the value, numerical value of the large area with the approximate uh, size of the area. So I, I uh, consider the large one to be roughly three times as large. So by dividing this numerical value 6 by 3, we get uh, a new value 2 that's, that is normalized for the size. Uh, and then the color is brighter in this bigger area. And it should make sense when you consider the density of the small area should be bigger than the density of the larger area. I, I hope that makes sense. So here we have um, election data from the US 2020 presidential election. Uh, I got this from uh, Harvard Dataverse and they have precinct level election results uh, for all the states uh, available on their website. Uh, in this data, when we look at it, it has uh, uh, the, the thing that I will be using is the results for uh, Trump and Biden. So there are results for more of the candidates, uh, but I will just be focusing on these two columns. Uh, that is Trump and that's Biden. Uh, to symbolize this, the results, you could do it um, as simply as checking whether or not one or the other had more votes. And to do that, we can just simply use an expression. So let's 
let's find the fields if Trump more than Biden then use a color that is red or use a color oops that is blue that's it so we're done well not quite um, since these are numerical values uh, portrayed on a shape we need to normalize it uh, and before we do that we may want to convey uh, how close of a race it was uh, and to do that I can't do it here anymore I need to use the assistant and uh, let's say Biden divided by Biden plus Trump that will give me the percentage of their combined number of votes and if it is more than half Biden uh, won that precinct if it is lower than half then Trump won it so let's get a color ramp that is blue and red like that so the deeper the red the bigger the win for Trump and the deeper the blue the bigger win for uh, uh, Biden uh, you could tweak this a bit since uh, the deepest red is uh, a complete win with zero votes for Biden and the opposite here uh, co uh, the deepest blue is a complete win uh, for Biden and zero votes for Trump uh, so you could fix the scale a bit So if we put, uh, let's say, 40%, that's a clear win. And that means we need to put this at 60%. That's a clear win in that direction. Also, I don't want to use white here. Uh, we will get back to that. I want to have something with um, some form of color value, uh, a light gray. So now we still have clear winds, so we didn't make any visual change. Perhaps we should make it 30. And 70 yep you can play with the values uh, in this case uh, the result is obvious uh, to the naked eye uh, it's a red state uh, and the outcome was that Trump won Texas so this should be okay shouldn't it well let's look at the statistics uh, let's look at those two columns so we have uh, 11 million votes for the two candidates and on average in each uh, polygon there are around a thousand uh, 
voters for those two candidates. If we take just one of them, Trump, he got almost 6 million votes of the 11 million and Biden got just shy of 5 million votes. So it wasn't a close race, but it was a bit closer than this image uh, would uh, present. So we may need to normalize these data uh, for the shapes. Uh, and we can also do it for the number of the voters. Uh, for instance, a large area that are portrayed deeply red may only have a very few number of voters uh, that would influence the total result uh, much less than a densely populated smaller area. So we need to normalize the colors and the numbers for uh, density and that is uh, the number of votes and the area of the shape. So let's start with the number of votes. Uh, there may be other ways to do this and I could probably combine it uh, in the in an expression somehow but I think it's easier to just duplicate it this layer uh, duplicate duplicate there we go and instead of um, using here the same styling I will use a different one uh, so let's do it count the number of voters like that and instead of this color ramp I will use a gray one so the darker the color the more people live there and then we use layer rendering to blend it with the underlying layer and I think we could use lighten yeah this will wash out the colors in the light areas and keep the colors in the more dense areas uh, we can play with the effect here by changing the opacity a bit and there are more ways we can play with it some but it should be at least somewhat obvious that uh, the areas that are brightest are uh, more red Okay, now we need to add the area. So let's edit this expression. We have the population, the number of people, and now we divide it by the area. And this will probably be a bit slow. So I will multiply by something and it still will be pretty slow. Now everything is more more washed out but let's look at the transform, transform curve. Uh, most of the values are here and uh, this is where it is mostly washed out. So 
let's move this this way that did something and let's Maybe like that. Let's see. And we could probably Let's try a different blending mode. And what I'm doing right now is uh, a little bit beyond the normalization because the map should clearly state that the uh, the outcome from the uh, state and trump won this state so the overall result should be uh, clear to anyone that views the map uh, but the details and nuances should also be really clear so this result is close to what I would say would be representative for the results for the state of Texas. Um, it is obvious that we have some population centers that are mostly blue and uh, surrounded by uh, intensely red uh, areas. Some population centers outside uh, of the bigger cities that are also intensely red and the rural rural areas are mostly uh, red and clearly red so this should probably convey the result uh, in a more truthful or appropriate way however as i've shown you can tweak data in uh, any manner manner that you want so depending on the purpose you have with the map you can uh, tweak the result in more or less any way you want so it is really important especially in a case where it is um, sensitive uh, and it's a lot of feelings and uh, uh, opinions surrounding the 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 result that you state how this was uh, produced and uh, what people are actually looking at regardless of uh, the data used i hope you have learned something about how you can normalize data in uh, in qgis see you next time